everyone. Welcome to Lady D Speaks. I'm Deidre, or D for short. I'm very excited to spend this time with you. So go ahead, grab that cup of coffee, and let's get started. So, oh my goodness, guys, I cannot believe that summer break is almost here, or for even many of you, it's already started. If you're like me, you're very thankful for the break, but you're also wondering how you're going to spend that time with your family. Well, of course, I'm here with a suggestion today. How about books? <laughs> now, if any of you follow my Instagram or Facebook accounts, you know that aside from my faith and my family, I am absolutely obsessed with books. I mean, reading them, buying them, and recommending them. And, of course, it's that last part I want to focus on today. When thinking about this break, I can see that even myself I can be overwhelmed of what am I going to do to entertain my kids. It's a very different time than it used to be because we're so limited. Things aren't open. Family vacations have been canceled. I mean, across the board, we all know we're going to experience a very different summer than we have in the past. So I was thinking, how can we make it productive and still fun for our kids and kind of a family interaction all together? So back in May, I actually posted a blog called Make a Connection. And it was specifically an activity and project my family and I did together. We created what is called a little free library, which again, if you've read my blog, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You can even go to their website. It's a beautiful and a wonderful idea. It's basically creating what it sounds like, a little library that you place in front of your house or if you got um, or have gotten permits from the city and other locations, basically a box with books that you want to share with others. And it's totally based on the honor system called take a book, leave a book. And it's allowing everybody in your community to have access to books. You can choose whether they're all kid books or a mixture of age range. It's really up to you as you would be the steward of this library. And I absolutely was in love with that idea. Aside from uh, many of the dreams I have, of course, one was to have, and is, I should say still is to have, a bookstore. I don't know why, I just love the idea of a cozy, quaint place where I can get to know my community and we all gather around books and just everyone enjoying it. So, of course, financially, I'm not in that place where that's realistic to do right now, but this free little library was perfect. So, of course, after uh, months of planning, thinking, looking, and researching, I figured the best idea was for us just to go ahead and buy um, a pre-manufactured box. Of course, you can create one from scratch, um, even using different ideas and repurposing materials that you may have at home. Again, if you go online, you could see a number of great examples of these kinds of things. Um, anyhow, when we got started, I was really surprised, and, and in that, I mean in the best and most positive way imaginable, that my girls were getting to interact with my husband when assembling it, using the different tools and drills, and seeing their excitement in getting and creating something from virtually nothing, as far as they could see. And after that project was done, it became a real group effort and excitement about us getting it together, getting it out there and filling it with books. And initially I was doing this just because I thought it would be fun. It was something I was really drawn and wanted to do. However, again, I was pleasantly surprised to see my girl's response to this. And you guys, the great thing about this is without realizing it, we just took a fun hobby, a really quick activity and project and it became so much more. This was a learning activity on so many levels. I mean, my girls got to do some critical thinking and problem solving as they tried to tackle going through these instructions with their father. And also this showed how well they can pay attention and follow directions. And even when they made a mistake, how to respond to that, how to back up and try to figure out what went wrong or what was skipped. And it was really beneficial without them having to sit down and necessarily be in front of a textbook or being talked to, which I'm sure most of our kids are exhausted by the end of the day, no matter what form they receive their schooling from. So this was a great way to put on or to put to use, I should say, hands-on application of skills they're going to need the rest of their lives. And this is a really beneficial activity to go through. Anything hands-on, I'm telling you, if you're not interested in books, I mean, don't let me know. They'll just break my heart. But if you're not interested in books, there are plenty of other activities that would require your kids to think and build. And again, be creative and tap that side of their brain, not mindlessly going through kind of the motions of these games or watching shows and other videos. Not that there's anything wrong with having some free time to do 
do that, but really we don't want our whole summer for them to be just about staring at a screen. That's not requiring any work from them, any creativity, and that's just not going to go really far for them. That's not going to be a long-term benefit. Again, doing this activity much more than I thought I would get out of it. Uh, Once we had it up, we had to set up the books. Again, my girls also got to tap into their charitability and what they wanted to share with those around them. Of course, there are special books that they just can't bear to part with, and there's no shame in that. But there were other books that they enjoyed, but wanted, and now were willing to allow others to take part in getting it and join them as well. Because I let them know that, hey, if you're going to put a book out there, it may not come back or may not come back in the shape you returned it. And that's just the trust that we're putting in, putting these books inside our little library. And so, of course, I've had to go through and, uh, look for sales, places where I can buy books in bulk so I can make sure to keep this filled. And I'll tell you, the response in my neighborhood has been awesome. I think I live in one of the best places in Southern California. And I've had neighbors donate books, post um, if I would like to pick some up. And again, they come for all age ranges, and these books are so much more variety than I think I would have bought. I have my favorite niches and things I like. There's specific books my girls love, but you need to have more variety. You need to think about your audience and what they're going to want. And it was just amazing to see the outpouring of support from my neighbors, like I said, uh, most of them complete strangers at the time too, donating because they saw how beneficial this was and how much fun their kids were having coming over to our little library. And again, it's been a blessing on so many levels. And when we're thinking about this summer as we're maybe disappointed if beaches aren't open or amusement parks are still closed, let's think of the fun we can have as activities as far as discovering the outdoors, hiking trails, biking, even uh, to local stores, doing something different out of the norm. But even more so, I think having your kids do something, building, using their hands, whether it's clay, paints, uh, slime, which I'm sure is a huge favorite, but also something that they can create that could be shared with others. Whether that is making pottery for plants you'll put in your garden um, or that you'll give to your neighbors. It's something that I think will go a long way in not only teaching them how to use their hands, but how to use their time wisely. Learn and grow and share with others. And that's really a big goal. But if a little free library isn't for you and your family, go ahead and pose a question to your kids. Ask them what they would like to do. What do they think would be a benefit for the community, your guys' neighborhood? Help the environment. I mean, really open up the conversation and let them think about it and let them give you some ideas of what would be a fun idea for a craft or a summer project this year. I mean, you may be surprised with what they come up with. Go ahead and drop me a comment about what projects you and your family have done in the past or plan on doing this summer. I'd love to hear it. Let's give each other some creative ideas so we can all enjoy this summer with our kids.